So the next thing I'd like to talk about is perspective. And perspective is uh, a way to get some three-dimensionality to your drawing. Um, and the key thing is to understand that there are a couple different types of perspective. The simplest is what's called a one-point perspective. And it's often used for interiors, and it's about the simple, simplest type of perspective there is. So what I've done here is I've uh, drawn a little box, and um, it's as if you could, uh, let's say, you know, there's something beyond the box that you can see um, in the horizon uh, through the back here. Um, so what I've done is shown you that there's a vanishing point, what's called a vanishing point here. And typically all the lines that aren't vertical or strictly horizontal, the ones that go back into the space, are converging, actually ending at that point. And the idea is if you had an interior space, um, all those lines would uh, end at that space and the horizon line is about where your eye level is. I think it's best if I did a little example um, to show you how that might work for, let's say you were going to do a view of your um, a room in your house. So essentially, let's say I'm looking at something uh, where those might be the end walls um, in a in a architectural drawing. This might be called a section where we've cut right through the house and we're looking at one side of it. So. Um, if our vanishing point doesn't have to be in the center, it can be here, let's say, um, we would just kind of, that's, let's say, the wire, the wall meets the floor, there's a back wall here, um, this is also where the back wall is, and then there's, there's the floor. So if we were to have, uh, for instance, so all these lines more or less converge on that vanishing point right here. And if we were to, say, put an object in that room, uh, let's just say it's a box, and we have that is the front of the box, then the top of the box would actually converge. Again, all these little lines are converging back onto that uh, vanishing point. If we had, say, a window in this wall, we would also have lines that converge to the vanishing point, um, like so. And so, you know, I would, there's a window. If I had a doorway in one of these walls, I would have, again, there's the width of the doorway, and again, the vanishing point makes that uh, horizontal like that. So typically um, vanishing points, like I said, are at our eye line. So if, for instance, I wanted to put a person in here, I could just, um, the head, your eyes, actually would be about equivalent to the height of that vanishing point. If I had, let's say, a rectangular light fixture on the ceiling, um, hanging down, I would have, again, these lines converging to that point right there. So there's different ways you can um, kind of create space with this one-point perspective. And um, it's an interesting thing that, you know, if you wanted to, again, go back to texture and surface like we did before, you would have, um, maybe you have wood plank flooring, and those wood planks would actually get closer and closer and closer as you get closer to the vanishing point. Um, if you wanted to uh, have some uh, mullions in the window, again, this line goes back to the vanishing point. If you wanted to have a door with panels in it, for instance, these lines right here and here, they also go back to the vanishing point. You, you notice that I'm not doing this uh, terribly accurately, but the overall effect is one that you can start to construct a room. You know, let's say there's some door trim here, there's a baseboard trim here, which is usually what you have going up a wall from a floor. You could also have some trim up here for a window, and you know, you can elaborate it that way. If there was a, a picture hanging on the 
on the wall, you would, it, the same effect happens. Maybe it's a rectangular picture and these lines all converge and, you know, there's some kind of interior scene. Maybe it's got a frame. So you can see, again, it's all about that vanishing point. And um, I've emphasized it here quite darkly, but you don't have to. You can just have a little point that creates um, a, a, a way for you to trace these lines back to that surface. So I think I'll leave it at that. Um, next we'll kind of look at two-point perspective, which can be useful for uh, describing buildings uh, from the exterior. So let's talk about two-point perspective. Um, this is a maybe a little more realistic type of perspective. Um, and it's two-point. It's good for exterior views of objects, particularly buildings, houses, that sort of thing, if you'd like to try that. So what, what happens here is we have the horizon line again, just like in the one-point perspective. And what I've done is I've made up these two vanishing points here. And instead of one point of convergence, now we have two. And this is really the case of how we look at uh, the world through our two eyes. So um, it's a little bit more realistic. And, um, but the same principle applies, where your, your vanishing lines are converging on a point here and here for the horizontals. The verticals are vertical. Um, in this case, I have shown you a little bit of combination of things that we've been working on. Um, one is uh, to use these different lines to define textures and surfaces. This might be a roof. Um, here we have the shadow and shade that um, might be uh, in the back here, as because right now I've got my sun right there. But in any event, um, you know, all these verticals are vertical. If I wanted to put in a little bit of a more of a window like that, those lines are, again are going out to the vanishing point. Same thing with this doorway and the panels in it, those are all going to the vanishing point. And again, you can be really sketchy about this. You don't have to be deadly accurate. It's kind of more fun to keep it loose. I put a person in here um, that, again, the eye level through their head is actually at the vanishing point. And um, you can construct a little um, perspective like this. So um, what I'm going to do now is um, I thought I would draw from a picture, but what I actually started doing on the picture was kind of fun. This is a house by Frank Lloyd Wright and a famous American architect. I've kind of figured out where the vanishing points are because I'm looking at all of these horizontals and where they converge. So here's one over here, I think, where you can see these lines more or less meet in that point. And then here, I just kind of squeeze it in. These lines will converge on that point. All the verticals are vertical. And you can kind of maybe use this as a technique if you find something you like to draw in a magazine or something. You can trace over all of these horizontals that are all converging uh, to this vanishing point and kind of get a sketchy feel. Um, here's some, again, we could use our different kind of marks to do the planter here. Um, you could add, you know, a little bit of texture like we've done before. Um, there's a little bit of the top creeping out here. But again, if you see all these lines, this roof actually, I think, does converge to this vanishing point. So you can draw in the edge of that roof. You could get the top of it. You have this little projection up here. Those lines are going back more or less to that point. And then, you know, you could start to um, add some shade and shadow if you really wanted to. For instance, here in the grass, um, you could just trace over the shadow that's in the drawing here and actually start to make some marks that look like shadow. Um, you know, it's never going to be exactly like this, the drawing, the photo, but it kind of gives you an impression of how you can create something sketchy uh, as you look at objects in the real world. In this, in this case, you're not at this house, but you could do this with a picture. You could just look at the picture, recreate it. Um, I'm, I'm kind of doing a little bit of a uh, overlay 
uh, here, but you can see how if you were just to take your time and look where those points are, that you could create an interesting little sketch of this house um, just by looking at the photo very closely. And then maybe at some point you could transfer this photo sketch to um, just a, a sketch um, directly from um, your memory or you go out and you find a house or some kind of object you like to do catches your eye and you do it without a photo and that would be really the object would be to do it so that you can go to a place and kind of record what you're seeing training your eye about perspective and looking at these proportional relationships and so forth but um, be sketchy about it and, and have some fun so um, this is kind of as far as I'm going to take this but um, you can see uh, that that might actually make a pretty good sketch even if you didn't have the photograph so um, go out and sketch have fun use the sketchbook and uh, enjoy it thank you